Howdy folks, Singin' Toad here, and uh, today I'm going to be doing a, uh, uh, an open tag response to a video I saw uh, last week there from uh, Pete, the Jersey Knife Guy. Uh, something to the effect of three knives everyone should try. Now, Pete, uh, in that video, uh, you know, God bless him, he, he credited me for coming up with this. That, that actually wasn't my idea. I don't know where that came from. That wasn't me who created that open tag. Um, the three for Thursday was originally created by Tom from Knife Delights, but, uh, the one he specifically did, I don't think that's what it was, um, and I don't know who it was, and folks, please help me out, if you know who came up with this original tag, the three knives everyone should try, please put it down in the comments, because I would like to give proper credit where credit is due, um, but, uh, I'd like to thank Pete for thinking of me, <laughs> I do do a lot of open tags, uh, and participate in, in a bunch of these things, so, I appreciate that. Uh, one other thing I wanted to quickly mention before we get on with the video is, uh, you know, I just have to, you know, say that, that Pete is a super awesome guy and he very, very much cares for the knife community and the people in the knife community. And, you know, he, in, in one of his more recent videos, uh, he brought to my attention, uh, well, to our attention, not just specifically me, to everyone, um, but, you know, I, I watch his videos, and uh, he brought to, you, to our attention something that I didn't even know about. A, a subscriber of mine, uh, a, a viewer of mine, I should say, a viewer of his, this fellow watches a lot of our videos in the community, big supporter of the community, uh, Mike Curtis. Uh, his father is is not well, uh, and uh, and although I don't know the specific details, and I don't want to talk out a term, um, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, um, uh, I know that Mike watches my videos as well. Uh, I, I appreciate that you that you uh, uh, watch my videos, uh, and 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 it uh, it saddens me to know that your uh, your father's not well. So um, I hope he gets better soon. And folks, uh, if you could please give some words of encouragement to uh, to Mike Curtis. Um, I would I would greatly appreciate that. So uh, anyway, folks, let's go ahead and get on with the video. All right, so three knives that I think everyone should try. Now I'm going to do a slightly different take on this. It's not going to be specific this specific knife or this specific uh, model, um, but more just one knives of the same uh, classification within the same brand. If that makes any sense. So the first one I want to talk about is the Benchmade. Uh, Griptilian series knives. So this happens to be the Mini Griptilian. This is one of the original ones. This is in the original 154 CM blade steel. Um, but what I like about this knife, and and again, folks, it doesn't have to be specifically a Benchmade. There are other brands out there that are now using the Axis Lock, or uh, some have different names for the lock. But uh, Benchmade, of course, calls it the Axis Lock. Uh, I know even Ganzo makes knives with this lock, uh, locking mechanism in it. But um, at any rate, this Axis Lock is a super fun lock to have. And, you know, if you want to talk about fidget factor in a knife, I mean, it doesn't get much more fidgety than that uh, with the action in a knife with the Axis Lock. But it is still, nevertheless, a strong lock. Basically, when the blade opens up, this bar goes across the back of the tang and it is encaged in this metal here. Um, it's very, very hard to, to, to cause this knife to break free um, without doing something incredibly daft. And, and yes, folks, I've seen some testing done where people have done spine whacking tests. They've hung weights off the back of a Benchmade knife, clamped it in a vise and hung weights off and the, and the lock. Uh, did not fail. It took it, it took incredible amounts of weight and it took a, incredible amounts of abuse uh, to get the lock to fail. And, and and the lock actually didn't fail. It was that the, the handle just broke apart. So, really, do you call that a lock failure when when it's more than just the knife in general failed? <laughs> but uh, that's neither here nor there. The point that I'm making is that this lock is super fun, but it's also super easy and it is ambidextrous. So whether you're a right-handed person or a left-handed person, the experience. Is the exact same so opening and closing the knife is the exact same and you can do it all one-handed which is really awesome um, now some of the downsides to the lock is that it does have Omega springs inside there is a little bit more complicated than some of the other locking mechanisms out of the market if it gets jammed up with dirt and grime it can cause a, the the lock to not function reliably or even fail um, but you know that's a less likely thing that's going to happen unless you work in a very dirty environment uh, then I wouldn't recommend an access lock I would I would look at some other type of locking mechanism maybe a frame lock for example but uh, very good locking design and you know 
The Benchmade series knives, uh, Griptilian series knives, are excellent. This is the original one, like I said, the 154CM. I also have another mini grip. This one's a little fancier. This one's got the different shaped, uh, you know, kind of this modified sheep's foot blade. Um, and it's in the S90V with the uh, carbon fiber uh, handle scales. This is the full size Griptilian. And this one is in the G10 uh, with the blue and gray. And this one is in the 20CV blade steel, just for a quick size comparison. So, you know, whether you get the mini or the full size, they're all good. Um, I would recommend, you know, if, if you're only going to get one Benchmade knife, um, you know, I would recommend a Griptilian. Uh, I think they're right kind of middle of the road for every every uh, functionality, you know. They're not quite as light as a bug out, and they're not quite as expensive as a 940. Um, so they're kind of like right in the middle. I'd say this is kind of the Goldilocks zone for Benchmade. Fight me in the comments if you disagree. <laughs> I'm just kidding, folks. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the Openel uh, knife. Now this here is... Uh, uh, the number six model and this is in the carbon steel and it's just now starting to develop a little bit of patina there I don't know how well you can see that um, I've heard it referred to as Tina Tina apparently if you say it three times it, it develops the patina um, I forget who was was it George Adventure or Erica EDC I heard say that and it just made me kind of chuckle I thought that was pretty funny um, but uh, you, you know um, Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm wandering off topic like usual. That's what, I, what I'm really good at doing, folks. But um, what's cool about these knives is that they're just dead simple and they're dead inexpensive. Uh, these things can be had for very little money. And if you like to modify your knives, these are great because the wooden handles that they come with, which, by the way, this is in beech wood, uh, they do come in a variety of different woods and colors and patterns. Um, but if you want to modify this knife you want to take a little bit of sandpaper and just get that uh, that coating off put your own coat of varnish or your own coat of um, of, of um, uh, stain that's what i'm trying to say wood stain and change the color or you want to get your dremel tool out and carve into it and do some wood carving get your wood burning kit out and put your initials in the back or or you know you could uh grind this logo off and put something on there i've seen and i've seen people do that there's videos on youtube of people modifying these knives and doing really cool things with the carbon steel, which by the way, these come in both carbon and stainless, with the carbon steel, again, there you can do little tricks. You put like strips of mustard along the blade and you put like a tagger pattern on the blade, which looks really super cool. Um, you know, it's just, these things are just great. And like I said, they're, they're, they can be had for like no money. And because they're just a simple collar lock, it's, it's a locking knife and it's just dead simple. So lightweight, thing weighs like nothing, you know, and it's very non-offensive. And because of how thin the blade is, like, like, I mean, it's a very tall, like, full flat grind. And because it's super thin, this thing is just an absolute slicey dicey knife. Great for food prep, um, you know, great for any, anywhere where you want, like, a little pocket scalpel. This is, you know, a great thing to have. And the particular carbon steel that they use is super good for, uh, you know, you can use it all day. And then just take it across your strop a few times, and it's right back to being razor sharp again. You know. Within reason. I mean, if you're cutting through, you know, tin cans with it or something, yeah, you're going to damage the blade and you're, a strop's not going to bring that back. But, uh, you know, if you're just doing the regular, what most of us do, opening up our Amazon packages, uh, you know, a strop's going to bring that edge back uh, lickety split. So anyway, that's the Open L, and any one of these doesn't have to be this specific one. Highly recommend as a knife you should try. Sorry to interrupt this uh, video here, folks, but I just wanted to take a quick minute and talk about something important. I recently got this uh, card sent in to me uh, from, uh, from from someone. Um, they uh, they it was anonymous. They didn't uh, say who they were, who they were, where they were from. Uh, but I thought it was very nice. It, you know, it says here it's your birthday, time to celebrate. I thought this was very nice. It is a little bit weird because it's not my birthday. Uh, in fact, it's nowhere near my birthday. But uh, let's go ahead and see what it says here. Oh, get out of here! All right, so the last knife I want to talk about is the Groman Canadian belt knife. So I don't know if, it, if the camera will show it here, but it does say Groman D.H. Russell, number one stainless. And then on the other side here, we have it stamped Canada. And I've, I've got the knife over here to avoid some of the glare from the lights. Um, oh, well, you can kind of read it up here now. So anyway, so this uh, this knife here is made in, uh, in Nova Scotia, Canada. And, uh, you know, why I... 
include this in the night in the list of three knives everyone should try is because it is a very unique shape. When you look at this knife, it's kind of an oddball shape. You know, it's got this upward swept ha uh, handle here, but when you put it in your hand, it just melts into your hand, and, and you go, I get it. It just, I mean, it, it just feels so nice in the hand when you hold it like so. And uh, because of this jimping on the back, it's meant to put your thumb there, which supports while you're doing, you know, cutting, you know, if you're doing, um, you know, making feather sticks or, you know, you could do some gentle batoning with this knife, but it is very thin blade stock. Even though it is a full tang knife, I wouldn't recommend, you know, using this for super hard use tasks. But uh, for any around the camp type tasks, you know, any just general outdoors, fishing, hunting, hiking, you know, it, it works for all those sort of things. And, you know, this is just, in my opinion, one of the greatest outdoors knives ever made. And uh, it's one you really should try at least once in your knife. You know, there are many like it out there, but this is the real McCoy. Um, and if you can get your hands on one, I would highly recommend giving it a try. Um, and, uh, you know, oh, and by the way, this is in stainless, but it does come in carbon steel as well. So if you uh, prefer carbon steel, guess what? You can get it in carbon. And they also come with different uh, handle scale options, too. Uh, if you check out uh, Groman's uh, website, you can see all the different options there. And they're not terribly expensive. Here in Canada, these things started at about $127 Canadian as of the last time I checked their website. Uh, if that price has gone up, folks, I apologize. <laughs> um, and also, Groman will oftentimes have factory second sales. So if you don't mind a minor imperfection on the knife, like maybe the, the there's uh, some blemishes in the handle scales, or maybe the blade is on an uneven grind or something, you can actually get it for even less money. So... If you don't mind a little bit of blemishing, you can check out their uh, their factory uh, second sales that they quite uh, frequently have on their website. So that's another way of getting one of these for even less money. But uh, anyway, folks, so we're just going to go ahead and put on my three knives that I was talking about today. So there we have it. We have the Openel, we have the Benchmade Griptilian, and we have the Roman Canadian belt knife. So these are the three knives that I want to say everyone should try. You know, folks, I would like to hear what your thoughts and opinions on the subject are. Do you like my selection? Do you hate my selection? Do you have different ones? Please tell me down in the comments. I love engaging with you guys. Please go check out Pete, uh, uh, the Jersey Knife Guys channel. Um, and, and please, uh, you know, uh, say some kind words uh, to, to Mike Curtis uh, about his father. Uh, I would greatly appreciate that. So I hope you guys are having a super awesome day, and this is going to be the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. This is Singing Toad, signing out.